Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final demonstration of today here at uh, Rotorfest 2010, the American Helicopter Museum. You can see our 47 coming from right to left. There's something in from by Terry Hinch, Bell Country Helicopters. Excuse me, Dust Country Helicopters. Uh, Terry's the former Scotland Yard Chief of Detectives who uh, went on to become the Chief of Police in York County. He's been living here about 10 years. This particular aircraft is uh, the one we all came to know and love from the MASH TV series. Uh, it's probably the most common, commonly used civilian aircraft in the world today. The frame is made of steel, lower than the lattice pattern, and uh, the blades are actually made of wood, the main rotor blades. This is a semi-articulated or, oh, excuse me, semi-rigid main rotor system, meaning it's two blades teetering on top of that rotor mast. Very susceptible to negative feeds. Positive feeds are okay, negative feeds are kind of a no-no. Powered by a single reciprocating engine that burns gasoline, very similar to your car engine. It's estimated that the Bell 47 type helicopter saved over 19,000 lives in the Korean conflict. It's coming back in with a steep turn, a dive. very difficult in an airplane. Remember, a rotorcraft, and in this case a helicopter, is an aircraft, but it's not an airplane. An airplane is also an aircraft. The airplane depends upon lift from the wings, a high pressure and a low pressure area, like we learned in fifth grade science class, as that air travels further over the top of the wing. In a helicopter, the lift is generated by the rotor blades fighting into the air mass, so to speak. Behind you, you'll see the Coast Guard HH-65 Dolphin aircraft coming up. Preparing for his demonstration. Now, as Terry continues this demonstration, if you can hear the engine chop, You'll know that Terry's about to demonstrate what happens to a helicopter when the engine fails or when we turn off the engine. That, that is an auto-rotation. An auto-rotation is what happens when a helicopter ceases powered flight and allows the upflow of air through the rotor system to keep the blades turning. Just like those little maple leaf pods in the springtime. It's arguably much safer to be in a helicopter, or at least a small helicopter with an engine failure, than it is to be in an airplane with an engine failure, because a helicopter has the ability to auto-rotate. An airplane has to fly at a certain minimum airspeed, or it will lose lift on one of the two wings and aerodynamically stall. Pretty soon, I think Terry's setting up for his auto rotation. When he, you, you rather hear that engine chopped, Terry's going to disconnect the engine from the drivetrain. He's going to allow the main rotor system to turn. There he is, there he comes. You'll notice a flare soon. Flare, flare, flare. And as the aircraft bellies down, he uses that last little bit of saved inertial energy of those turning heavy rotor blades to transition back to powered flight, arrest his rate of descent, and do a nice gentle landing. As you can see, he was not screaming out of the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another winner in the free, uh, free helicopter flight contest, Chuck Kauchi. Chuck Kauchi, I hope I'm saying your name right, C-A-U-C-C-I-E. Chuck, if you want to report over to the uh, table where they're selling the tickets, you'll uh, be in receipt of your free flight.
Terry starts to come in. Looks like he's done. You may notice the Coast Guard agent.